Well, hello, friends. Wolfcore here. It's good to be back. It has been quite some time since we did a YouTube series together. I've missed you all so very, very, very much. And it is fantastic to be back with a new series. This is Seven Days to Die, if you're not familiar. It is a post-apocalyptic zombie survival game. And it has become my latest obsession. Uh, I wasn't really into survival games before checking this game out, but ever since... I did, I have become quite a fan of the genre. So, the object of this game is to find materials and build a base and better armor and weapons to defend against zombie hordes that will be attacking you every seven days in game, or every seven hours real time. However, I wanted to make it a bit more spicy for our playthrough. So I went ahead and turned the zombie strength up to insane, which means they're going to be very tanky, have tons of HP, and hit really, really hard. Like the, the thick boy zombies out there, they're going to two-shot us right now. So very, very scary zombies. We also turned the zombie speed up to nightmare, which means every zombie we see is going to be at a dead sprint all the time. Normally, zombies will only run at night, and even then they're just running, but all zombies all the time will be at a dead sprint. Rather than doing a horde every seven days, we're going to do a horde every single night. And we turn the horde zombie count up to 64 times zombies, which basically means 64 zombies can be loaded in at any given time. The default is eight, and all of these settings are at maximum. We also turned off loot respawn. So once we loot a building, it's looted. That loot won't be coming back because I think loot respawn is a little bit silly and immersion breaking. Also, we turned off airdrops, which are basically just nice little supply crates full of food and whatnot that the game will give you every couple days. So we turned that off. And last, but most importantly, this is a permadeath series. So once we die, once the zombies get us, it's over. We gotta start over, man. We're done. We're dead. In addition to all of that, I'm also gonna be implementing an XP multiplier at some point or at multiple points throughout the game. And that's kind of a good thing for us because it gives us more levels, more skill points, and allows us our character to grow stronger. But it's going to increase our game stage. And as our game stage increases faster and faster from the XP multiplier, it's going to cause the hordes every night to get larger and larger and scarier and scarier. So what that's going to do is it's going to cut down on this kind of lull that I always run into in the mid game between like day 20 and day 40, where I just feel so ahead of the zombies that I'm not really being threatened. And only once demolishers and the really, really scary zombies start showing up, do I actually start feeling threatened. So I want to eliminate that mid game lull by increasing the XP. Now, all of these things together sound really difficult and they are, that's why I'm doing this. I like the challenge, but I wanted to give myself a few quality of life changes that would just kind of make the experience more fun for me and a little bit more reasonable considering how difficult the settings are. First, I'm gonna give myself a helmet light mod. Now this isn't really a big deal, but it's just kind of a quality of life thing that's gonna allow us to see in dark places. That is gonna help me a little bit, but more importantly, that's gonna help you guys, the viewer, be able to see what's going on when we're looting dark places, be it a house, a cave, what have you. And there's another thing that I'm gonna do. Let me preface this by saying that there is one or two things that I don't love about this game. One, the lockpicking, and two, the RNG of the traders. So there are traders. We're going to be heading towards one today. They're going to be sort of your quest hub, and every three days in-game, they're going to have an inventory of randomized items that reset. So part of the problem that I have with this game is... Uh, transportation right so you need a vehicle vehicles provide storage and fast transportation around the world i'm partial to the motorcycle myself but the thing is to get your vehicles you have to spec fairly far into the intellect tree and then further into grease monkey just to have the luxury of crafting a vehicle it takes quite a lot of time it's just kind of a pain and i don't like having to do it every single new playthrough that i've done so you can avoid this if you're lucky and the trader happens to be selling the vehicle you want to buy when you can afford to buy it. So it does happen. It has lined up for me before where, you know, in the first week, the trader happened to be selling a motorcycle and I'm like, sweet, I got enough coin. I picked up the motorcycle, easy peasy. So I want to remove the RNG factor from the game and just assume that at any given time, the trader 
has a motorcycle for sale. Motorcycles are, I believe, 20,000 coin. So once we get 20K, we're just gonna throw that on the ground, spawn in a motorcycle, and pretend that the trader had sold us one. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with three items, the motorcycle, the nail gun, and the pump shotgun schematic. The nail gun is, again, mostly a quality of life thing where it's gonna allow us to build structures much faster. And I think that's fair given the settings. You know, it's like, I don't wanna spend literally all day building a structure with my stone hammer when I could just have a nail gun and do it in one third of the time. So, but we will still again have to buy it from the trader. So it's not like we're just spawning in a nail gun for ourselves. And lastly, the pump shotgun schematic. Uh, shotguns are just my favorite weapon in the game. For this playthrough, we're gonna be playing with shotguns and clubs because it's what I'm partial to. In future series, we're gonna try out all the different builds in the game with the different guns. But the pump shotgun schematic, you know, I didn't wanna, again, just give myself a pump shotgun or give the trader a really good pump shotgun that I could just buy early on. The schematic isn't quite as impactful. I don't know, it's hard to say, but we're just trying this. We're gonna try to make it work um, because I don't wanna have to go through the game planning on being shotgun spec'd without getting a half decent shotgun. That would be kind of a bummer. So we're just trying this. You know, I also thought about putting like the crucible schematic in, uh, but I felt like that would be OP. I didn't really want to do anything OP. I just want to give myself some quality of life and a little bit of a fighting chance against these overwhelming odds that I've set up for myself. So with all that being said, I should be about done with the tutorial stuff right now. We're going to cut back to live commentary and I will see you guys at the end. All right, so I was really struggling with trying to get through the tutorial and commentate and hit, all, hit on all those different points that I was talking about. So we are back live, and I need to put one of these guys down to finish up the tutorial. Let's repair that, and there's a chicken over there. I think I'm actually gonna try and go get us some chicken meat. Chicken, 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 chicken. Yes. Yes. Let me grab this little nesty nest right here. Uh, we don't have any knives yet, or a bone knife, so we're just gonna have to beat this chicken up with our stone axe, which is just fine. And last but not least for the tutorial, we need to craft a campfire. And I always like to put this out in the road when I'm starting a new game, because, you know, we're so weak and pathetic right now, but, you know, many days from now, we'll come riding through this area on our vehicle, and I'll see this and I'll be like, oh shit, this is where we started. Look how far we've come. It's always a fun moment. So why don't I cut down this tree down because we've got a little bit less wood than I would like. I'm going to do a little bit of inv inventory management. Uh, get rid of stuff that we don't need because we have a long run ahead of us to get to our trader. It's 1.4 kilometers away. So I'll catch up with you guys in a second. So we are crafting out a bunch more arrows in case we get cornered up a tree. And I went ahead and sorted through our inventory. I ended up scrapping our cooking pot, which may seem like a stupid decision when you're lucky enough to find cooking pot on day one. We actually found a wrench uh, in our first sink, which is great. Uh, so with the wrench, that pretty much guarantees we're going to be able to craft a forge tonight. Uh, and with that forge, we can simply craft a cooking pot at our home once we get there. And uh, so I don't need to carry a cooking pot with me all day is what I'm trying to say. So that's why I didn't do that. And something I like to do is break garbage like this. You get plastic parts and they'll stack up pretty high. And you can sell those to the trader for pretty reasonable, for a pretty reasonable amount of income in the early game. So we're just going to be checking all this garbage that we come across along the road towards the trader and hoping for good things that we can use and then getting plastic parts to sell, among other things. I'm actually gonna throw out this ammunition. What happens when you scrap ammo? You get lead. I've never actually tried to scrap ammo before. Uh, it's a bummer to throw out ammo, but obviously we don't have a gun to use it. And I just don't need it clogging up my inventory right now. It's not that much ammo at the end of the day. And there is a log over there, or a stump, not a log. And stumps can have honey in them, and if you get infected, the best thing that you can... Ooh, there's another chicken over there. The best thing that you can do is eat some honey real quick. It's the easiest, cheapest way to cure your infection. So as we work our way down the road, I'm just going to be looking for specific things. Stumps is one of them. 
garbage, cars that we can look inside, uh, any kind of easy wood or stone that we can pick up. Just trying to pick up the basics, really. Bird's nests, of course, getting more feathers for arrows and eggs that we can eat. And anything we can hunt is great. Deer are not the best on this difficulty because they're they actually have a lot of health. So a lot of the times when I come across deer, when I'm playing on Nightmare, I will just let them go because I don't want to spend, you know, a good chunk of my first day hunting down a deer when I've got more important things to do. Uh, but we've got two chickens so far, which is great. That's just given us meat, feathers, and all sorts of little goodies. We have a bone knife now, so we're gonna get, we're actually gonna get more resources from this chicken. So I'm just gonna keep on working my way down the road, and once we run into our first zombie, things are gonna get interesting. All right, and our first threat looms in the distance. We've got a stripper zombie up ahead. And zombies are scary, especially on day one. They're never more scary than on day one, but as long as you're just dealing with one at a time, it's really not that bad. My technique that I came up with for dealing with them safely is just to put down two frame blocks, get on top, and try and pull them with the bow. Unfortunately, she's... Come on, fly true. Fly true like Legolas. Ah! All right, that's fine. You know what? We're just going to aggro her on foot. And that'll be okay. For the sake of our first kill, I'll show you what to do if you don't have time to prepare. So, three good hits with a club should knock down a zombie. And then you can just retreat, hop up on your nerd pole, crouch down, and start slapping them in the head. Like that, and five hits should kill a zombie as long as you get them in the head. Fortunately, I'm missing. Woo! And as long as we are mindful, we can keep these blocks repaired, which is why I went ahead and chopped down two trees to get 250 wood. So even if we do get stuck up a nerd pole, we can chill up there for quite some time safely without really having too much to worry about. So yeah, that's how you deal with zombies on day one. Uh, you can foot up, fight them on foot. You don't have to play it safe like that. But, you know, when you're playing permadeath, it's always better to play it safe. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Got another one. All right. Oof. First attack missed. That's not good. All right. We took a hit. Not good, but that's okay. We can get up our pole, and we're fine. Now, these are... This is an example of one of the weakest zombies in the games. Um, and you can see he actually hit us for 25 damage, which is a quarter of our health bar. So things are pretty sketchy out here. Uh, here's another example of things that I like to loot on day one. These piles of, like, goop and meat on the road. Uh, you get bones, nitrate powder, rotting flesh, and animal fat from them. I throw everything out but the bones. Uh, bones are really important and a finite resource. Bones are mainly used to make glue. And glue is very important because you use it to make duct tape, which is used for a lot of different things. So I always like to pick up those little piles and just throw out the junk that I don't need. Not that anything in this game is junk. Everything is useful that you can loot. Oh, jeez. But you have to be choosy on day one, especially when you spawn in this far from the trader. Let's get up our pole. And that's actually... the Is that the passing gas headquarters? That's a big passing gas over there. And I have looted that... POI before. Uh, POI means point of interest. Uh, it's sort of a seven days to die term. Maybe maybe it's used in other games. I don't know. Uh, but I've looted that POI before and I know where the main loot is. Come on, Kenny. Just one more headshot should do it. There we go. Yeah, so I know where the main loot is in this place. It's up on that roof there. And I think if we sneak around to the right, we can avoid the zombie threat and potentially nerd pull our way up there deal with a couple zombies and uh maybe grab the main loot that would be really fantastic because i don't expect to be back up this way for a long time so you know why not we're gonna give it a try there we go he's dead you know what i actually forgot to spend our skill points so let's go through those real quick uh for my first skill points I like to go pick up Pummel Pete because I am a club kind of guy. 
Uh, so that's going to allow us to craft level 2 clubs, and our clubs are just a little bit better. I like to pick up a sexual Tyrannosaurus. This is just a must. It makes you better. Uh, it reduces the stamina cost of swinging all weapons and tools. And when you get killing blows at level 2, 3, and 4, you get a flat amount of stamina back. So really, really strong. Sexual Tyrannosaurus is just kind of essential. Uh, rule 1 Cardio, because we're going to be on foot for so long, uh, I like to take this. It just makes like life a little bit better. And then with the last point, I'm always torn between Pain Tolerance and Healing Factor. Pain Tolerance is going to reduce the damage that we take by 5%, and 20% chance less to get stunned, so it just makes us more tanky. But Healing Factor is just going to double our HP 5 from 1 every... I want to say we're at 180 seconds, down to 1 HP every 90 seconds. And because we are missing some HP, we're just going to go with Healing Factor first, and that's going to help us heal up over time. And as long as we are careful, we'll get topped off again pretty soon. And, oh jeez, oh no, 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 that is a big boy. His name is Mo. Um, and Mo is not like these little zombies that we've been killing. He hits much, much harder. Uh, so we're going to avoid Mo, which is unfortunate because Mo is standing right where I want to go. We're also going to craft a level 2 club and scrap this level 1. That should help us get some kills a little bit easier. I'm going to try and skirt around him to the right. And if we do get cornered, we you know we can kill Mo. I just don't want to. It's going to waste a lot of time and a lot of wood repairing our pole. So we're just going to try to avoid Mo. And I've already got my heart set on this idea of pulling up here and trying to get the main loot, so we're still going to do that. So let's come over here and figure out how we want to do this. All right. We're just going to pull our way straight up and cross our fingers. I did not craft enough of these. Let's see. 20, 30. Should be fine. Oh, there's a purse right here. I didn't know that. Hello. Oh, <gasps> oh my god. I th oh my god, I thought I was going to break my leg or sprain my ankle or something. We are so, so, so fortunate that that did not happen. Um, let's just fix our stack, because I am a silly goose. All of that over a purse. <laughs> Alright, I don't know why it wasn't letting me loot it before. That's weird. And there's nothing in it, of course. Whatever, we're fine. We're chilling. Okay. Let's go up a little bit more. I see what looks like maybe a crawler's head right over there. And I know there's a dog kennel up here, which means a dog can spawn. But I'm not sure. Dogs don't always spawn in just because there's a kennel. Sometimes they just don't. If there's a dog, we're just getting the fuck out of here as fast as humanly possible. That crawler, I'm not worried about. They're the only thing in the game that isn't scary on Insane Nightmare difficulty. Excellent. All right, he's dead. Let's get back and crouch. Sneaky, sneaky mode. Let's see what else we got. We got a Zambi. And I don't see a dog anywhere, guys. I think we did it. I think we're... I think we're going to get the main loot. Um, how do I want to do this? I think I want to be on a pole. Yeah. Yeah, I feel more comfortable now. All right, so we got her in the head. She's probably going to jump up here with us. We can just kill her like normal. Oh. Oh. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. She's still alive. I hope she doesn't wake anybody up. Um, so I'm going to come over here. I'm going to put that right there. <laughs> We're going to upgrade that, so in case anybody decides to come join us up here... They're going to have to get through that block first. Take the good water. Break this down for the plastic. We got some food. We got an ammo pile, which sadly we can't really utilize right now. Uh, but I'll take it regardless. So let's pop into all of these crates in the main stash. And, ooh, we got a blunderbuss. That's fantastic. We got some basic cloth gear we can wear. Very, very good stuff. And does that, that cowboy hat actually sells for a decent amount. And I also said I was going to spawn in a light mod for myself, so I'm going to do that now since we just got a helmet to put it in. Come over to modifiers, pop that bad boy in, 
hit F, and now we have a flashlight in front of us. Not a big deal, but it is something. I want my blunderbuss in the number three slot, and let's get that loaded, just in case we need it in the immediate future. Uh, was there anything else? Again, I don't want to carry all this ammo around. It's just too, too much. Bring the ammo down to the action bar just to get some stuff out of our inventory. And let's pop into these crates. All right, let's see what we got. We got a wheel. That would be, ooh, 12 steel. That wheel would be much more exciting. And a wrench schematic. Hmm. That wheel would be much more exciting if we were going to be crafting a vehicle this playthrough, which I don't intend to. 12 steel is really nice. Uh, the shovel, we were going to craft one of those anyways. As for the wrench schematic, I would rather sell this. And these handlebars sell good too. Let's scrap that for the iron. Uh, um, just do a bit of inventory management. And I hear a zombie down there making some noise. That lady is still angry. Let's try and eat some of this food just to clear up space. We really don't want to have to run a kilometer super encumbered. That's just going to make life much more difficult than it needs to be. Okay, I think that's good enough for right now. Now there is a lot happening down there. Oh, I'm tempted to go get that backpack. Let's do it. I don't know. I just have a good feeling about it. Come on, give me something good. Make it worth it. Food? I'll take food. I like food. Food on day one is always good. All right, now we need to get down. And I want to take all of these blocks with us. Check our corners. Ooh, shit. Okay, we're fine. We're fine. Okay, he hits for 20 damage a swing. So we're good. He can hit the block twice before we need to repair it. And we're just going to have to whittle him down. That's okay. I had totally forgotten about Mo. I really, really hope that other zombie does not show up while we're dealing with this situation. Okay. There you go. We're doing just fine. I could upgrade the block to play things a little bit safer. That's probably not a bad idea. Let's just upgrade it to level 1. Just in case I get distracted. Let's just keep smacking Mo in the head. He'll go down eventually. There he goes. It was tempting to use the blunderbuss there, but blunderbusses are very noisy, and there are a lot of zombies in the area. So I didn't want to do that. So let's just get the hell out of here. We got some good stuff. I'm happy. Let's get back on the road, and it is already hour 16, which is insane. We're not even halfway to the trader yet. Ooh, Grave Digger Mod Schematic. That's a good one. I'll learn that and try and get one of those crafted or a couple of those crafted as soon as possible. And welcome to Dyersville. This is one of five, air quotes, cities on the map in the five different biomes. This is in the grasslands. That's the biome that we're currently in. And, uh, yeah, I've spent a lot of time at Dyersville. It's always nice to come back. It feels like a second home. And we also just found a level 2 scrap chest piece, which is great. That's going to make us a little bit tankier to zombie hits. And the ground here is just littered with garbage and piles of iron and all sorts of little goodies that I want to pick up. But I'm just, I'm not going to get off my path. We're just going to keep moving in a straight line. If we find stuff right in front of us, we'll pick it up. But I can't stop and pick up everything. There's just too much. But, you know, we'll be back. Uh, we're not going to be living too far from Dyersville. We're going to be living in the burnt biome rather than the grasslands, which is typically where most people set up shop. Um, ooh, there's another Mo over there. Eee, so many zombies. Yeah, we're going to be living in the burnt biome. I already have a house picked out for where we're going to live. It is near to Jen the Trader, and it's sort of right on the border between the grass biome and the burnt biome. Yeah, we just got to get our butts over there, man. It takes a long time on foot. <sighs> Leaving Dyersville, and there is the lightning, which signals hour 18, which means we do not have a lot of time left before the zombie horde shows up. But, you know, we actually haven't leveled up yet today. We are still level 1. And I discovered recently, I went ahead and did some science, because I had something odd happen, where... It was a Horde Every Night series like this, 
and the first night the horde didn't show up. So I did a little science, a little research, and I figured out that if you don't level up, you don't actually get any zombies on your first day, which personally I think is kind of stupid. But what can you do? We are, however, if we don't level up, I'm just going to spawn in like three zombies for us to fight, which is what you normally fight on night one. Because, you know, there's supposed to be zombies on night one. That's that's what I've come to expect. And if the game won't give them to me, then I will give them to myself. That was really stupid. I just spent all my stamina chasing down a rabbit. with, And I knew there was a zombie right there. Uh, let's just get back to some flat ground. See if we can attract this boy over to us. Come here, cutie. I like your hoodie. There it is. All right, my loves, we are almost there. The traitor is looming in the distance. I can see the silhouette of her house or her shop. And this is actually uh, not the first time I've started recording this series. And the last time I died right here. <laughs> I ran into two zombies. One of them was a construction worker and they're scarier than the regular zombies and I accidentally aggroed them both at the same time and the construction worker jumped on top of the cheerleader's shoulders and got up on my nerd pole with me and killed me and I wish I could say that was the only time I've started recording this series but it is not. I had to scrap a number of attempts due to bad footage. Um, I was struggling to get OBS to record in a quality that I was satisfied with. Fortunately, we have since achieved that quality, and since then I've had two series where I have gotten into it and died. The one I just told you about, and then there was another one, I think the day before that, where I died on day three, just due to a stupid mistake, totally my own fault. But that's okay, you know, that that just goes to show that this is a serious challenge, and I like serious challenges, that's, that's why I'm doing this. That's what I'm about. Oh, 18 forged iron? F fuck yeah. And some painkillers. Oh, baby. Thank you, Jen. You are giving me the goods, aren't you? Anything else in here? Cement mixer schematic. That's pretty cool. I mean, we're going to have to spec into that anyway, so maybe I should have just sold that, but maybe we'll get lucky and... Find some other schematics, and uh, I won't have to spec into. What's it called? Sorry. Maybe I won't have to spec into advanced engineering as far as I normally do. Okay, I think that's everything that we can loot around here. Let's go talk to Jen, pick up our first quest, sell all of the stuff that we have brought with us that we don't want, and see what she's got to buy for the first three days. Uh, do you have any jobs? Nothing close. Okay, that's kind of a bummer. To... Uh, we'll take this one. This week, I will that's give fine. You employee of Let's the go month. into her inventory. Mm. Yeah, we're going to sell those. Sell that, that, that. You know, 89 coin for the plastic that we picked up along the way. It adds up. Really? You don't well, want the flashlight? I carried this all the way here I'm and you don't want to buy it? You. What is it with traders and flashlights fine fine we'll also sell the oil oil is really good to hang on to uh, it's very useful but it's worth 20 coin a piece at the start of the game i would rather have the 20 coin i think that's everything i want to sell to you right now so let's quickly look through your inventory uh, it's tempting to buy those gloves for only 400 but um art of mining really good uh, if you can get all seven of these books, it's very, very powerful. It makes you makes mining super easy. So we'll definitely be buying that. Uh, AK recipe, no thank you. Got some bandages, I think. Yeah, 150 for five healing bandages. That's worth. She's got vitamins um, and antibiotics in her inventory, which is nice in case we end up needing those. Lucky looter goggles, plus three. Uh, ooh, and a cigar. Cigar is huge, especially for our build. You always have to find a cigar and equip that. So we'll probably try and pick up the cigar. Lucky looter goggles. A beaker. 
and yeah, she's got some good stuff is what I'm trying to say, uh, but we don't have to figure it all out today. Structural brace mod, I think I'll actually pick that up right now. We can throw that in our club and it'll just up its damage a little bit and a shotgun book. You can craft slugs, that's fine. I hope you get feeling okay. better. We only have one hour left. Let's go ahead and throw the Structural Brace mod in our club. It's going to make it hit just a little bit harder and increase its durability. And we need to get to our home. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. What do you... What do you want? Why are you just running towards me like that? Okay, that's fine. Oh, God. I can't get on a nerd pull next to Jen's place. <laughs> that scared me. Okay, we really need to deal with him quickly because we are running out of time. Uh, our home is going to be right over there, just on the other side of the burnt biome. It's the closest natural POI to the trader. And it's just a little one-car garage off of a house. And one-car garages are just perfect for what we need. It's just got enough room to put all of our workbenches and all of our storage. And on the back side of that, we're going to add a big, giant, zombie-killing fortress of doom. It's going to be amazing. It's going to take us a long time to build, but that's part of the fun. And yeah, that's what we're going to use our nail gun for. That is going to be our humble beginning right there, that little garage. I'm going to grab this stump over here. And we've got iron right here, which is very close to our home so eventually we're going to dig down and we're going to have a mine underneath our house and so we're going to be tunneling towards that iron since we know it's there Ooh, two radiators that's pretty good all right welcome home everyone this is where we're going to be living for a while um how do we want to do this let's go ahead and pop out two of these and we're going to put a hatch down right here Skaboop. This is a very, very important hatch. This is all that is going to stand between us and the zombie hordes. Uh, we might as well wrench this car out of the way while we're waiting for the horde to come. Uh, the horde always arrives at 2200 or 10 o'clock at night, but we shouldn't actually get any zombies, I don't think. Because again, we didn't level up yet. We got close, but not quite there. So if no zombies show up, We'll just spawn a couple in and deal with them. Hello? Yeah, no zombies, all right. So in case you would be curious, if you would like to spawn in zombies for yourself at any point, hit F1 to open up this command prompt window, type in DM, that's gonna turn on debug mode, exit out of this and hit, I think it's F6. Yes, and this brings up the zombie spawner. So let's just spawn in three burnt zombies, and uh, deal with them. Uh, what the f bro? What the hell was that? Not cool, man. Not cool at all. You saw that, right? That some nonsense. Well, let's try out our blunderbuss. That'll do. Skaboop. Oh, I think we attracted another friend with our blunderbuss shots. Oh, hello. We can deal with you, no problem. I almost think I hear another one. We're getting a lot of friends tonight. Hey, get down from there. We got one more friend at the door over here. Uh, this is a good time to show you this uh, frame block technique. Anytime you have a door frame, you can just get through the door, drop a frame block down here, and the zombie is stuck. Makes life much safer and easier in a pinch. And yeah, this is where we're going to be living, guys. We're going to be holding down probably around the first ten hordes just in here, just like we did. Oh, hi. God, they just keep coming. Not that I mind. I'll take the experience. We actually got a level up, which we need. Oh, my. Is there no one else? Is there no one else? All right, we have successfully fended off the first horde 
We ended up getting quite a bit more than I was expecting there. That was kind of fun. And we got a level up, so let's spend that before we call this an episode. We're going to come over to the Intellect Tree, Advanced Engineering, and we're going to take Blacksmith. And that is going to unlock the Forge recipe for us. So if we come over here, we should have everything we need minus the clay. And clay is pretty darn easy to get. We're just going to come over to some earth here and start digging away. Getting about two per swing. And we only need 60, so this shouldn't take long at all. Success. All right, we got the 60 clay that we need. Let's pop our cute little butt back inside. Get our forge crafting. And we haven't actually looted this place yet. Not that there's much in here to loot, but let's have a look. Some seeds, some glue. Glue is always good. Some beverages. And I want to say there is a purse up here. Yes, there is. And a little bit more water. All right, I'll take it. Do we have a vulture friend? We do have a vulture friend. Let's deal with you real quick and chop him up for the the bones and the feathers. And yeah, I think that's going to do it for this first episode, guys. I want to thank you all so much for watching. And I really do appreciate it, and it's really, really good to be back. Uh, this is a permadeath series, so wish me luck, guys. Once I die, the series is going to be over, but I think that's going to make it a lot more fun. And if you enjoyed the content, uh, please let me know down in the comments. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.